अस्सलाम वालेकुम डियर स्टूडेंट्स वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द फ्लोरिसेंट माइक्रोस्कोप टुडे सो सो दिस इज लिटिल बिट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस माइक्रोस्कोप्स दैट वी हैव स्टडीड दिस इज मच सेम एज द कन्वेंशनल लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप विद द एडेड फीचर्स टू एनहांस इट्स कैपेबिलिटीज बाय द हेल्प ऑफ दिस वी कैन व्यू द स्ट्रक्चर दैट दैट कैन नॉट बी व्यूड बाय द हेल्प ऑफ द यूजुअल माइक्रोस्कोप यूजुअल लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन द लैब this microscope additionally requires some apparatus like excitation filter a barrier and a dichromatic mirror along with the fluorescent stain a specific wavelength of light is used to excite the fluorescent molecule in the specimen meaning this requires some specific kind of lamp that would uh, initiate this different kind of wavelength a light of higher wavelength is imaged in this way so the key feature of the fluorescent microscopy is that it employs the reflected light rather than the transmitted light yani yahan pe wo light use hogi jo ki reflect ho ke aayegi rather than the light that was directly transmitted uh, from the series of lenses that means that the transmitted light techniques such as the phase contrast microscope can be combined with the fluorescent microscopy so all this is achieved by using the different powerful light sources for example laser lamps because they can be focused to a particular pin point this focusing is done repeatedly throughout one level of specimen after the other most oftenly an image reconstruction program is required in this case because it can put the multiple level images data together into a 3d structure and it can give it to the and it can make it easy for the viewer to view the uh, samples so here are the different parts of the fluorescence microscope uh, for example there is the emission filter the dichromatic mirror the excitation filter the uv light can pass through the optic fibers and it can reach to the uh, viewer through the eye there is also an upright camera that is attached to the computer and there you can see larger picture so let's look at the different components of the fluorescent microscope in detail uh, number 1 is the light source that is the uh, xenon arc lamp or the mercury vapor lamp these are commonly used other than these uh, the power led light can be used or the lasers can be used in the advanced forms of the microscope uh, other than this after this a set of optical filters are used these optical filters uh, include the excitation filter the emission filter and the dichroic beam splitter or the dichroic mirror okay so the excitation filter selects the wavelengths to excite a particular dye which is present within the specimen we can choose this filter uh, by our own will because we know that uh, which color we have given to the sample then there is a dichroic mirror that can reflect the light in the excitation band and transmit the light in the emission band and in this way it can enable the classic epifluorescence incident light illumination we will read about this in later slides an emission filter serves as the kind of quality control by letting only those wavelengths of interest that are emitted by the fluorophore that pass through the emission filter then comes the dark field condenser this dark field condenser provides a black background to the image because of which only the fluorescence is visible meaning only those objects that are stained with the fluorescent dye that will give a certain glow and they can be viewed because of the particular kind of the excitation filter that is used okay the filters are often plugged in together in a filter cube in the compound microscope for example you can see here uh, within this one the filters are adjusted or they can be uh, replaced according to the requirement so here in this picture you can try to understand that in the fluorescent microscope there is the light source that falls through the excitation filter over the dichroic mirror uh, and what happens is that the light which passes through the excitation filter it will fall on the sample and this sample is now stained with the help of the uh, chemicals or the agents that are known as the fluorophores 
दीज आर यूज टू लेबल द डिफाइंड सेलुलर स्ट्रक्चर फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम प्रोटीन स्ट्रक्चर फॉर एग्जाम्पल सम सब न्यूक्लियर और सब सेलुलर स्ट्रक्चर लाइक माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया और सम प्रोटीन सो लेट्स टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ जी एफ पी और द ग्रीन फ्लोरिस एंड प्रोटीन बिकॉज इट विल एब्जॉर्ब अ सर्टन स्पेसिफिक वेव लेंथ एंड गेट एक्साइटेड एंड देन इट विल इमिट सम स्पेसिफिक हायर वेव लेंथ ओके एंड दिस विल पास थ्रू द डायक्रॉइक मिरर सो नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस इज नॉट द ट्रांसमिटेड लाइट रादर दिस इज गेटिंग रिफ्लेक्टेड बैक टू द डायक्रॉइक मिरर एंड पासिंग थ्रू दिस एंड रीचिंग द अमिशन फिल्टर ओके एंड नाउ दिस लाइट विच इज अमिटेड एट अ हायर वेव लेंथ दिस रीचेज टू द डिटेक्टर and now uh, it helps to visualize the molecule of interest that is already stained by the help of the fluorophore using certain specific kind of antibodies or proteins and this is done by means of different staining methods this specimen is then illuminated at the excitation wavelength and then it is viewed that now what happens is that only the wavelength that was emitted through the sample it can be detected through the detector because only this one could pass through the dichroic mirror and the emission filter here as the background will appear dark because of the dark condenser in the structure which is stained with the fluorophore that will emit the light indicate the pres indicating the presence of the structure of interest Now let's see different types of the fluorescence microscopes. There are various types of the fluorescence microscopes, some of which are common. For example, the epifluorescence microscope. This is the most common type of the fluorescence microscope in which the excitation of the fluorophore and the detection of the fluorescence are done through the same light path, like shown in the previous picture. Then comes the confocal microscope. In this type, what happens is that high resolution imaging of thick specimen. without the physical sectioning can be analyzed using the fluorescent labeled dye okay so this section is a little bit thicker as compared to the one which was used or visualized in the epifluorescence microscope then comes the multi photon microscope in this type of microscope multi multi photon fluorescence excitation method is used which means that multiple kind of photons are used that result in the excitation of different kinds of molecules and it results in a capture of the high resolution three dimensional image of the specimen and this specimen is already tagged or stained by using the specific fluorophores then number 4 is the total internal reflection fluorescence microscope this microscope uses the unique property of the induced evanescence wave or the field in a limited specimen region immediately adjacent to the interface between two media having the different reflective indexes okay, so now let's see some uh, of the definitions so what is a beam splitter or a dichroic mirror this is an optical device that splits the beam of light into two it is a crucial part of many optical experimental object experimental objects like the uh, fluorescent microscope or the fiber optic telecommunications it was shown over here then comes the xenon arc lamp that is a highly specialized type of gas discharge lamp it produces the electric light that can produce the light by passing the electricity through the ionized xenon gas at high pressures and this is used in the optical equipment because it produces a white light with very high intensity that is closely that is very close to that of the natural sunlight okay Uh, then comes sigma bonds and pi bonds these are the chemical covalent bonds uh, maybe uh, you remember them from your uh, lessons of chemistry sigma bonds are shown over here so these are formed by the overlap of atomic orbitals by their end to end overlapping whereas the pi bonds are those which are formed when the lobe of one atomic orbital overlaps the other one and generally speaking the sigma bonds are stronger than the pi bonds so then comes the definition of fluorophores 
these are also known as the fluorochromes just like the chromophores so these are the fluorescent chemical compounds that can re-emit the light upon light excitation yani in pe jo bhi light fall karegi ye usko re-excite karke uh, re-emit kar sakte hain fluorophores typically contain several combined aromatic groups or the planar or the cyclic molecules with several pi bonds and we just read the definition of the pi bonds so what is fluorescence this is the emission of light by a substance that has absorbed the light or the other electromagnetic radiation and as a result of this the substance is said to be fluorescent when it absorbs the energy of invisible shorter wavelength radiation for example ultraviolet light and as a result of this it emits the longer wavelength radiation of visible light for example green light or the red light and that's all for the moment thank you